You could have given up, but you didn't. You could have stopped believing, but you didn't. You could have kept living their expectations, but you decided to make this life your own. And in turn, you're here. Hello everyone, today we're meeting Anne Hins. She is an author, a public speaker, and a spiritual teacher. Hello, Anne. Thank you for joining us today. Hi, Anna. It's lovely to be here. Thank you for having me. Thank you. And we're just going to start our conversation with diving into your personal journey of becoming the person you are today. If you can just share with us what led you to discover the way to find your inner peace through a lot of challenges and traumatic experience that you had in your life. Okay, that's, that story didn't really start until my late 30s. But in childhood, I had lots of traumas, I had lots of things happen, um, you know, some big traumas, little traumas. And we get programmed in childhood on how to deal with those things. And my family just ignored everything. So we suppressed all of those emotions. And we never talked about anything that happened, we just carried on with life. So that was my normal. That's the only thing I knew how to do. So I continue to do that until in my late 30s, I have what I call a business altercation with a couple of other mothers at my boys' school. And these mothers were very self-confident, self-assured authority type women. And I was not. I was a scared mother on the inside and they told me I'd done something wrong. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And, you know, it wasn't a big thing. It, 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 I didn't think I'd done anything wrong, but I couldn't stop my mind from spinning. It just went over and over everything they had said, everything I'd said, the things I did, the things I could have done differently. I just couldn't get it to stop. Mm -hmm. And it was about three days into this that I suddenly realized, okay, this is not normal. I don't think normal mm -hmm. people do this or their minds don't do this. And I also realized at that point, it felt a little bit like how I would react when my dad would tell me I'd done something wrong. Mm -hmm. So that was my first inkling, the first opening that maybe something from my childhood is still affecting me to this day. So that was the beginning of my journey. I didn't actually know mm -hmm. what to do at that point. I happened to go to a doctor's appointment in that time frame. And this doctor, he was also a parent at my boys' school. Mm -hmm. So he knew me from outside of school he, and he knew my family situation. I was a stay at home mother with two young boys. They were both healthy. Everything should have been good, but I was still really stressed. Mm -hmm. And he was also a holistic physician. So he had more tools in his toolbox than many doctors do. Mm -hmm. And he asked me on a scale of zero to 10, what my stress level was. And I said it was an eight. And then he asked me why. And it was that question that made me realize, oh, it was from finding my mother dead on the bathroom floor when I was 19, because the tears from that event was still just under the surface all these years later, right? Because it's now almost two decades later. And he happened to know this technique that is called EFT, which is mm -hmm. short for emotional freedom technique. It's also called tapping because we tap on our certain places on our body as we're talking something through. Mm -hmm. And he tapped with me about my mother's death for about 15 minutes. And I walked away from that appointment, being able to tell the story of her death in my mind for the first time ever without the emotions there. And that's mm -hmm. when I realized that we hold those memories and those emotions physically in our body. Mm -hmm. We store them inside and we can let them go. Okay. Yeah, I see that emotional freedom technique is uh, the way for you to release those emotions through tapping. And there are certain um, acupuncture points, right, that you would use uh, to let yourself like release them. If you can just, um, you know, elaborate more on the type of technique for other people to have an idea how it works and uh, maybe some simple steps that they can use at home to try if that's working for them. Okay, yeah, it's a little bit like acupressure because we're mm -hmm. actually tapping on the ends of meridian systems. So it's the yeah. same points each time. We just go through the same points again and again and again. There's nine general points yeah. and we tap on them as we're talking something through. So that is accepting 
whatever it is. So we might be feeling an emotion, right? In which mm -hmm. case the words we're using are to focus on that feeling. So maybe I'm feeling sad right now. Yeah. I would tap using the words that this sadness, I'm feeling sad right now. We'd tap on all the different points using that phrase mm -hmm. over and over again until the sadness has dissipated. But we can also do that with memories. So um, I went back, you know, after that one time with my mother's death, I, I had mm. to do it again because what tapping does is it releases the energy that's stuck in the nervous system. Mm -hmm. And that's opening up the subconscious mind. So more details of the story come to mind. They had been hidden mm. underneath that resistance that we hold, you know, that we don't mm. want to look inside. But once we release that, then the memories start to surface more and we can tap and release those. I do have a video on my YouTube channel that goes into all mm. the detail of EFT. If anyone wants to look into it there. Yeah. One of the things I love about EFT is it provides you feedback. Your body will tell you that you're releasing energy. So it will mm. yawn. Some people sigh, some people burp. Yeah. Um, a lot of times uh, the voice changes, right? When, when we're really angry, right? It comes mm -hmm. out in the voice, right? So if we're tapping, on the words like I'm really, really angry right now, it's in my voice. But as I tap and I let that energy go, the voice changes. So, you know, I might end up saying I feel angry right now. Well, maybe I don't, right? Because my voice has changed. The energy of the anger has dissipated from the body. Mm -hmm. So I didn't necessarily trust it from that first experience from with the doctor. I actually went right. home. I went online. I learned everything I could about EFT. Mm -hmm. And then I tried it out. I wanted to try it out. And I tried it out on something fairly simple. I had a 17 year old cat at home at the time and his kidneys were starting to fail. Mm -hmm. And we were told we had to give him a daily saline shot, like an injection of saline solution. Right. First time I gave him one, my hand was shaking so badly. I was so afraid of giving him this shot. I knew I had to do something because I had to give him one every day. Mm -hmm. So I tapped about it. I tapped about every aspect of it, which is something you do with EFT. So I tapped about my hand shaking. I tapped about my fear of hurting my cat. And I tapped about all the memories from all the injections that I had had over the years. And the next day, the needle just slid right in. All mm -hmm. that fear that had been living inside of my body the previous day had totally mm -hmm. disappeared. And that's when I realized, firstly, how powerful EFT is. Mm -hmm. But secondly, I realized I wanted to be on the other side of all that fear. And now I had a way to get there. So that's when I started using it daily. I'd start mm -hmm. noticing when I was becoming emotional, right? And even that in itself is not an easy thing to do because we get caught up in our emotions. But if we can stand back and say, okay, look at me, I'm starting to get frustrated right now. That's where your power is, right? That is when you can do something about it. So that's when I would tap. I would tap, okay, I'm feeling frustrated right now. I'm feeling frustrated right now. And I would tap through all the points and allow that frustration to dissipate. And then I'd carry on with my day. Mm -hmm. And things started changing. I started to become less reactionary, which is something I really wanted. Yeah. And I started to becoming more peaceful inside, but I wanted it to go faster. Mm -hmm. So what I did is I wrote down every emotional memory I could think of from my childhood, every big trauma, little trauma, negative beliefs I had, phrases my family would say, like, shame on you, or stop, mm. stop crying, or I'll give you something to cry about. I would tap through one of those each night for about an hour to an hour and a half. And I really found things changing quickly. It got to the mm. point that I actually remember opening my kitchen door one day and saying to myself, it feels like I'm living in a different reality. Because my mind, oh. which had been so busy, previously had mm -hmm. become quiet and that's when I realized that the phrases that I would say over and over in my mind right I'd criticize myself I'd judge other people they had been phrases that I had been programmed with in childhood my dad would say them or my mom would say them mm -hmm. and I didn't see that until they were gone and then I had a mind that was quieter than it had ever been in my life and it was a totally mm -hmm. new experience for me wow that's beautiful and yeah. how long did it take you to come to this realization that but this is it, this is the quiet that it gets and I feel like different person now? 
yeah, I can't remember the exact time frame. I don't know, maybe maybe a year or two years oh. of doing the tapping at that point. Mm -hmm. um, but it didn't stop there. That was really just the first step on my journey. Mm -hmm. So I kept using EFT. And what I realized is, as I said, it's opening up the subconscious mind. Right. As that happens, our awareness expands. It expands into ourselves. So I started to become aware of my emotions during mm -hmm. the day, like, like I said. And underneath the emotions are a set of physical sensations. So when we're feeling something like frustration, we're actually holding ourselves in tension. For me, I can feel that tension in my solar plexus. That's where mm -hmm. frustration lives for me. So at that point, I didn't feel like I needed to tap anymore. I wanted to just focus on that frustration, that emotion sitting inside of my yeah. physical body. And I could do that now. It, I, my focus had developed over time. Right, I'd got better and better at it. So then I could just feel that feeling inside of me, whatever it was, fear, frustration, and I could just sit with that feeling. And when I did so, I'd actually have to hold my breath. I'd actually have to stop and be like a statue because otherwise I would lose it. I couldn't find that feeling anymore inside. Mm. So I would focus on it, hold my breath, and at some point, obviously I'd have to take another breath. <laughs> yeah. And at that point, I'd think the thought again or feel that emotion again. And I noticed it had dissipated slightly. So then I would do it again with the same thoughts, same feeling over and over again, kind of similar to tapping, but now I'm just feeling it. And eventually that emotion, that tension would dissipate. It would be gone. Mm. And so I started using this every day instead of tapping. And in the evening I would lay on the sofa because I'd, I'd worked through my childhood at this point. I'd worked through those mm. traumas. So I would lay on the sofa and I would feel collective traumas, something like 9-11. We all had our own personal experience of mm -hmm. that event, right? We saw different videos, we felt different things. So I would bring those memories and those emotions back into my body and just allow them to be felt and they would dissipate. <laughs> and it oh, felt wow. really good, right? It's old tension <laughs> that's been stuck in the body for decades feels really good. So I just, I just loved doing this. So I kept doing it. And at some point during this process, I realized that I could keep my awareness, mm -hmm. my senses, my feeling senses inside my body after the tension had dissipated. And it felt very different. It, the way I mm -hmm. kind of try and explain it is imagine you have a toothache or a stomach ache. You can feel where that pain is coming from, right? You can sense it. Mm -hmm. But once the pain has gone, you can't really get your awareness back on the same place inside because there's nothing calling your attention to it anymore. I found that I could, I could keep my awareness inside my body after the tension had left. So then I started to play around with it and I moved my awareness around inside. I could find a place that had tension or no tension. So mm -hmm. I'd find the place with tension. I would focus on it again, hold myself like a statue just focus on it and it would shift a little bit. So then I would do it again and mm -hmm. it would shift and I'd do it again and again. And the tension inside would release. And it took many, many months of doing that work before I could put my awareness inside my head. And mm -hmm. that was huge because there was so much pain and tension inside my head, unbelievable pain and tension inside my head that I had not been aware of, right? My awareness had not been at a deep enough level to feel that pain and tension that had lived in my side, my head for 50 years since I was born, because right. I was born with my right foot up against my right shin. So my whole mm. body was twisted, but that, that was living in my head. So, but now mm. I've got this technique, right? So I started to work with it, hold my awareness on the pain or the tension, allow it, just allow it, right? That's, that's what's different. I think with my story from a lot of things we're hearing, it's, there's no, mm -hmm. no trying to change it. There's no suppression just trying to feel it, allow it to be felt. And that's when the shift happens. As soon as it's accepted, mm -hmm. it releases a little bit. So over time I would feel things release and I would feel my skull bones relax, felt really, really good. <laughs> and it wasn't until um, 2021 where I had x-rays taken compared yeah. to 2013 that I could see that my bones had shifted. Oh, my, wow. my jaw was way off to the side. It's much more centered. My eye sockets have even shifted and I didn't know that was possible. 
and my neck is straighter than it's ever been in my life. And I've grown three quarters of an inch because I've been releasing mm. that burden that I was carrying and holding me down all those years. Right. Yeah, it was some kind of <clears throat> resistance for your body to be free and to grow and to allow yourself, you know, naturally kind of develop. So with you finding those techniques for yourself, you allow yourself to feel. And with the practice, you find a way to hold that awareness inside of your body and find where that area of resistance is and like let it go and just release it more. Yeah. And um, that is um, that like we see reflected in the physical part of you as well and that also proves the connection like we say body and mind and emotional um you know uh part of us we all we're all that we're, we connected in all different areas and it's just hard for people sometimes to to let themselves feel through those emotions um and allow themselves to kind of release them for um you know, it could be due to different reasons, but uh, with knowing that those tools exist, they could also try and see for themselves because they will feel better and better every single time they're doing that. And that's, like you said, it took you um, quite some period of time, but eventually you set yourself free. Yeah, I think a lot of people are using these techniques a little bit, Mm -hmm. I think my story shows if you keep going right. and if you really know that it works and that's what the experience with the cat did for me, right? Mm -hmm. I knew it worked and it was so powerful and made such a difference so quickly. I knew it was going to make changes. So I was determined to do it at that point, but I had to get to that place where right? I had to have that altercation mm -hmm. with these other parents to realize that I needed to do something. Right. I, I'm not sure I was ready before that. So I think a lot of us get to that place where we're yeah. ready to do something. So if you're ready, I highly recommend trying um, these techniques and, yeah. and sticking with it and seeing what a difference you can make. Because one of the key things is it's so much of it's kept in our subconscious. We're not aware of it. And that's what mm -hmm. getting into my head showed me. There was so much there that I had just not been aware of in my whole life. It was hidden from me. And I think that's the case with most of us. Yeah. And uh, like you said, everything is in subconscious. And that's the thing about it. We're not aware. We don't realize that that's what's running our life on the background without us knowing it. And if that's the reality we want to change, we need to start within. We need to find a way to release those type of emotions or trauma or some kind of memories associated with certain emotions. And uh, it's it's not easy to do, but the first step, I, I think, is awareness and knowing that, you know, you're ready for change and you're willing to do the work that will get you to a different place. Um, and... Um, your story shows that it's possible and uh, every one of us can get to the same place and find that inner peace. Yes, I agree. And I, I've heard a couple of people just in the last couple of days say that um, med mental health issues are going to stay with you for your whole life mm -hmm. or you're always going to have that trauma inside of you. It's always going to affect you. And I don't believe that's the case. I believe if we do this kind of work, it's not always easy, right? If you've got yeah. a big trauma, you probably don't want to look at it, but it's actually living inside of you as dis-ease. It's in your mm. connective tissue. It's tension held inside. It's not helping you, right? So if you want to help yourself, it's going to take the courage to go inside and look at that trauma in detail and allow the emotions or the energy that has been stuck inside to dissipate. And then you're going to feel lighter, right? Things, things change. And it's really fun to experience, but you actually have to experience it yourself to really believe that that is the case. Yeah, like I say, wars, they don't teach. You have to experience to know that it's possible and that will show you um, the difference. You know, you feel lighter 
And you know that with you practicing certain techniques or tools, like before you go to bed, or just just have some time during the day where you know you can find that time for yourself and uh, little by little, just see how you feel. And that will be enough evidence for you to know that it works. And uh, with that knowledge, you can keep going and to get to to the place where you want to be. Absolutely. And one of the things I say with EFT, because it looks a little funny, right? We're tapping, yeah. we're tapping on the top <laughs> of our head, we're tapping on our right. face. But if you just want to tap while you go to the bathroom, right? Take a break during the day, tap while you're in the bathroom, acknowledge what you're thinking and acknowledge what you're feeling. And maybe, maybe you're just really frustrated over what's happening during the day. Instead of just thinking those thoughts, right? And going over them again and again in your mind, tap as you're doing it, because that allows the energy of those thoughts to dissipate. And then the thoughts can leave. I mean, that was one of the, such a fun thing for me to experience is mm. have a thought that I used to think over and over again, be gone and not come back again. It was just wow. so fun. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So that's, I think like the bonus on top of it, that uh, the thoughts that would be gone after you doing it as you know a certain period of time and again like it comes to the point where you have to kind of stop for a moment and know that this is it and you have to do something about it and to name that emotion like how do you feel what is it for you and like you said if you can just maybe find some place to tap and release that energy uh, that associated with that thought and the thought will be gone as well <laughs> yeah it's fun and awareness gets deeper and deeper as you do this work and and mm -hmm. what I do now is I, I look for instances where I know there's got to be some emotion inside so I will watch the news now so that I can feel how I feel and release at a deeper level so you know it, it doesn't the journey doesn't end it can do, you know, some people just want to do this work for a little while to get over something and then carry on. But if you really want deep change, you want to change your future, then just keep going and, and just noticing how you're feeling during the day and and work with that feeling and allow the energy to dissipate and come back to peace. Each time we come back to peace, I believe we're changing our future because once we're in peace, we're attracting peace into our future. Right. And it also not only affecting us, but people around us. If we're at peace, imagine how we influence others in our, you know, um, circle. So it's a lot of uh, positive influence for everybody to kind of like uh, evolve together in a better, you know, in a positive culture. So if every one of us would just be responsible for their own feelings, emotions, and uh, and if they can find that place where they feel peaceful, that that would be just the best, uh, you know, kind of like scenario for everybody because this is what will, uh, you know, kind of facilitate the better relationship with everyone. Absolutely. I think it can change the world. I mean, yeah, yeah. Once, once, once we're all at peace, we're all going to attract peace. And, and wouldn't that be nice? Oh, wow. Yeah. Something to think about. Thank you so much for your story and your wisdom. I'll include the, the website link in the episode description for those who want to see the YouTube video, how to use the technique and they could start doing it at their home. So thank you so much and enjoy your day. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed this episode. And if you did, hit the subscribe button and share it with others. Stay tuned.